In this update, we're going to be going over my fall forecast and break down the trends for you over the next couple of months, plus update you on the hurricane season. So let's first start off and take a look at the sea surface temperature anomalies. Out here into the Equatorial Pacific, you can actually see these waters have drastically cooled of what we, what we saw just this time last year, where we are were heavily influenced under an El Nino type pattern. We transitioned out of that in summer, in the June of this year, and now we're more or less in Enzo neutral, means more like normal light conditions. We are trying to make that push to La Nina, or if not weak La Nina, but we are still in that Enzo neutral criteria. And if you break down the, you know, over the next seven days, you can see the trends continues to cool some of these waters in the Equatorial Pacific. So we are on the way to meeting that weak La Nina criteria. But as of right now, and I think for at least another probably month or two, we're still going to be influenced under that Enzo neutral. And you can see the trend here. It has predominantly been downward really since June the 8th. That's when we officially came out of El Nino. So anywhere anywhere you have between a, a plus five and a minus five, that is typically Enzo neutral criteria. But you have to average that over a th the last three months. And you can see we're right there at 0.55. So technically, that would trigger a weak La Nina, but it has not reached it, that level over a three month time span. So that's right now we're on the cusp of a weak La Nina, but we're still heavily influenced under that Enzo neutral. So we are expecting the latest update from the Climate Prediction Center that transition to the La Nina likely in October, if not definitely in November, we do have a 74, 74% probability of reaching that La Nina criteria by then. So if you are new to the channel and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and you're in to get all my daily updates on this channel. And I would love to reach 250,000 subscribers. You can help me get there by subscribing to the channel and following all my daily breakdowns. So if we take a look at the Enzo neutral analog years, those years that fell into fall, we can go back all the way to 1995, 90, 1998, 2007, 2010, 2016. So since 95, those are all the analog years in the fall months that we are where we are now in that Enzo neutral criteria. And typically that what that basically means in layman's terms is more normal like sea surface temperatures, right? So we can see them drastically cooling then they have rapidly cooled off, but that is from well elevated levels from the, from the El Nino type levels that we were in last year. And now we're transitioning into that Enzo neutral and that typically would and imply more of a, a normal hurricane season. So we're going to go over that as well. So right now, going forward, here's here's the setup over the next week. And we start to see those cooler shots. And these are going to be a little bit more prevalent. We saw some of these cooler shots in the summer months, but these are definitely going to be a little bit more prevalent as we head into fall with these cool downs every once in a while and we're going to be getting another one over the next seven days especially into the central and eastern two-thirds now the ridge of high pressure is still going to be dominant for a good part of the west and the pacific northwest i really don't see that breaking down anytime soon we are going to be seeing cool shots at times across the central and eastern two-thirds and along with those cool shots we are going to be experiencing a little bit more drier air than than also on the back side. So we have the low pressure center now. So obviously about those areas in West Texas have picked up a lot of heavy rainfall over the last couple of days. But once that moves out, that area starts to dry out. And right now we are watching several systems out there into the Atlantic and it favors well above average precipitation heading into Mexico. But it also favors a lot of shearing going on. And that's that moisture spreading into Louisiana, much of the southeast and Florida and up the east coast. So we'll be watching the trends on these tropical systems, especially as things start to get a little bit more active heading into September and October and going into even into next week, we, we're going to be seeing that cooler shot 
start to lessen a little bit as that ridge of high pressure will start to build, but you know, will continue out west, but also shift further into the central US. So we're gonna be seeing these cool shots and then a warm up, cool shot and then a warm up. And I think that's gonna be the trend in the month of September. And then by the time we head into that third week of September, we'll have another cool shot. And this could be kind of a more bona fide fall like front that brings those temperatures down all the way to the deep, deep south with bringing those cool, light, crisp, fall-like temperatures, but it does actually favor another drier type pattern on the back side, but that will also allow those temperatures to dip because of the clear skies and light winds. So we are expecting the ridge of high pressure still going to be predominant over a good part of the southwest and much of the west. Those areas across Idaho and Montana, I think those remain on the well above average side. But across the middle of the country, through the central plains and much of the southern plains and the Ohio Valley, we are going to be getting these cooler shots at times as when you warm up. So here's the setup over the over the next month on the precipitation front so again it kind of favors as these cool cool shots come further southbound they will favor below average precipitation with them where it doesn't favor below average precipitations because we are expecting a more active month on the tropical front and we'll have to be looking out for certain areas into the southern gulf of mexico as well as into the southeast especially for those areas into florida and eventually up the eastern seaboard during the month of september and you can also see the the european is kind of following suit as well Yes, hinting at those well above average precipitation anomalies out there, down there into the Bay of Campeche, down into Mexico, but also another pocket of well above average precipitation down there into the southeast or along the coastal regions into Florida and would likely spread up into the east coast as well. So going forward, one of the analog years is predominantly going to be 1995 on the hurricane season front. I know coming into this season, it was pretty bullish. And that was one of the reasons with this La Nina starting already. And since that has pushed back a little bit, that brings down the hurricane numbers as well. So we are expecting a, a, you know, more of a normal or above average time frame going forward. But overall, I think the count is going to be anywhere from 18 to 19 named storms. And it does favor, since it kind of started late, it's likely going to end late. So you got to remember, we still have three months left of hurricane season. It goes all the way through November 30th. And I think these are one again be going to be one of those years that we still have storms even into the month of November. So definitely don't let your guard down. And all five storms so far has actually hit land. So yes, I mean, we haven't really had any fish storms or anything like that. And you know, we always get about five or seven of those every single year. So, and we could have several other fish storms that are likely gonna be forming over the next 10 days. So what we're mainly concerned about is this little tropical wave that is now into the Caribbean that will continue westbound because it continues on the weaker side that likely trends more westbound. And if it can survive the trek over the Yucatan Peninsula, it's going to get into the southern portions of the Gulf of Mexico where things are very conducive for development. So there's two areas to watch as it trends possibly into the into Mexico, but we'll also be watching that timing member of that second cold front that comes through this weekend. This area is supposed to be into the Gulf of Mexico by the time on Monday night. So it's all about the timing of the trough. If it's if it's kind of more of a later arrival, this would likely spread and sp spread its precipitation into Florida. If it's a little bit faster arrival, it would likely spread its precipitation down there into Mexico. Ones back behind these, these also could be named storms, but these are the ones that actually could be fish storms as well, heading out into the open waters of the Atlantic. Things do get fairly conducive as we head into next week. So right now that trend is puts that precipitation down there into the southern Gulf of Mexico. And so we'll have to be watching the timing of this trough that's this cooler shot of air that will be coming down 
if it pulls down and pulls back up, and while this is still in the Gulf, it has more of a chance to be lift further northward. If it's out ahead of it, it's going to be keeping the trend further west and it's going to spread its precipitation down there into Mexico. But nonetheless, we are expecting things to get started getting active on the tropical front. We've had five named storms. And like I said, I think we're expecting anywhere from 18 to 19 storms by the time hurricane season ends, which is not until November 30th. So we're going into the peak season, the heart of the season, the bulk of the season. So don't let your guard down. I think things are still going to be active on the hurricane front. So going into October, we're still going to be heavily influenced under that end zone neutral, but likely making a trend towards that weak La Nina by then. But we'll still, I think, have these cooler shots of colder air coming in every once in a while from, from Canada. But I do feel much of the West and much of the desert Southwest will likely continue to remain on the overall, you know, warmer than average side, while we'll have those, you know, continuing cooler shots of air coming in from the north, breaking down and overall bringing some more average light temperatures across the central central part of the country. So that's what I'm looking for in the month of October. What I'm also looking for as we make that transition into a little bit more of a weaker La Nina, we are going to be getting that more active polar jet starting to come alive. And this is pretty typical around, you know, the Pacific Northwest and the northern branch as we head into the October, November time frame. This is going to be turning on the wetter side. So I am expecting a lot more wetter like conditions start to appear for those areas across Washington and Oregon and Idaho, much of Montana into Wyoming, much of the Dakotas into Minnesota, this northern tier of the upper Great Lakes and the Ohio Valley and a good part of New England would likely be on the wetter side. As the further south, we are an overall on the drier side. Now, October is one of those months that it's the wettest, one of the wettest months out there, you know, next to the month of May. So just because you see these brown shaded areas doesn't mean you're not going to get any rain. <laughs> it just means you're favoring below average precipitation across these regions with a more or less active subtropical jet likely starting to develop down there into the equatorial pacific and as we transition into november i still think we're going to get the kind of the same deal right as, even if we transition into more of a a weak la nina by then we're still going to be favoring those above average temperatures for a good part of the west and the pacific northwest while much of the central u.s and maybe even across the east coast by now we'll start to feel more of those cooler shots of air that will come down. Now, I'm not expecting the entire month to be on the chilly side. We are gonna be getting warmups in between, so it's probably every other week, right? So we'll have a cool shot and then a warm up, a cool shot and then a warm up, cool shot, then a warm up. And that's what I'm favoring across the central and eastern two thirds to overall, you kind of balance yourself out and more or less bring you more of a more average light conditions or more normal light conditions is what they what they often refer to as. But you know, if you break it down over the next three months, we're talking the months of September, October and November. Yeah, it kind of looks like this. I mean, the odds are, since we are predominantly still in that end zone neutral, likely transferring into a weak La Nina by the time we get into maybe the middle of October or sometime in November, even still, we are favoring those cooler shots of air come across the central part of the U.S. and portions of the east to bring overall those average light conditions and out west you're definitely favoring to stay on the the hotter side or definitely the warmer side you know over the next uh, three months and we'll start to look at the precipitation right so here's the breakdown over the next three months so overall i'm still expecting even though still you'll get some good rains at times these areas across the south and central states and much of the southeast is definitely favoring on the below average side on the precipitation front while much of our northern tier the northern branch the the polar jet branch of the jet stream would likely favor more average to above average precipitation during the months of september october 
in November. So guys, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. I'll be putting out a more detailed winter outlook over the next week or two. So definitely stay tuned for that. Definitely uh, subscribe to my channel and catch me accept date. Why I protect you before and after storm.